Let's talk about Abraham and sex. In Genesis chapter 12, God promises Abraham that he will be a great nation at the age of 75. And he doesn't even have a kid. His wife, who is 65 years old at this time, they have never born children. And so they begin to believe God and trust God. But we know from the biblical timeline that nothing happens for 10 years. Sex was no longer a time that was going to bring them together, but more or less an act that was going to remind them of how God's promises are failing. Sarah goes, I have an idea. Why don't you have sex with my slave, Hagar? Now this seems really weird to us, but back in their time, this was customary for somebody who could not have a child. And Ishmael was born. And God said, no, Ishmael is not the promised son. It is going to be one who is born from you, Abraham, and you, Sarah. Sarah was going to get pregnant and give birth to a son, but it didn't happen right away. For another 14 years, they do not get pregnant. At the age of 100 for Abraham and 90 for Sarah, the promised child, Isaac, is born. Abraham and Sarah were not the only ones who struggled in trusting God's promises. Their promised son, Isaac, did too. Him and Rebekah could not have children for 20 years. Then they had twin boys, Jacob and Esau. So what is a possibility of why God was delaying the birth of Isaac, the promised son, and also Isaac's kids, Jacob and Esau? I think we have to look 400 years in the future before we see the answer to that. You see, God told Abraham that his descendants were going to be enslaved in Egypt for 400 years. And by delaying the birth of Isaac by 25 years and Isaac's kids by 20 years, we have 45 years, which is about the length of a generation. So by God delaying the birth for both Isaac and his two sons, Jacob and Esau, God was able to eliminate a generation from suffering and slavery. This is how we have to view suffering. It doesn't reflect upon God's goodness. It doesn't reflect upon his promises to us. It doesn't reflect upon our bad character. It has to do with things that God sees well beyond what we even know. We need to quit blaming God why our answers to prayers aren't happening soon. And instead, we need to trust him through the pain. We need to accept that God knows what he's doing, even though we don't understand it. And sometimes the little bit of pain and suffering that we have to go through is so that a generation, 400 years from now, doesn't have to experience any at all. And are we willing to carry that load? Are we willing to trust God through the pain and suffering? Or are we gonna go have sex with Hagar?